Hey there, everyone. It's Denise Salcedo. Welcome back to the channel. I am very excited to introduce to you my guest for today because she is literally killing it all over the place. You see her everywhere. Ladies and gentlemen, Taya Valkyrie. What's up, Taya? Hi, how are you, Denise? <laughs> I'm doing great. You know, it's funny because as you know, you and I just a couple minutes ago, we were talking about how, you know, we're both based out here in Los Angeles, but I feel like I'm constantly seeing you everywhere. Like I just saw you in Mexico. Then I just saw you at GCW and you are keeping so busy. Yes, it's been a crazy year. <laughs> Now that it's coming to an end, I kind of like sit back and just kind of look at it. And it seems like it went by really, really fast, but also so much has happened when I look back. So I don't know. It's just been, it's been one for the books. <laughs> it certainly has. And obviously we'll get to all of that and more, but first and foremost, I do want to ask you, you know, how your day is going. We're nearing towards the holiday. So I kind of feel like every time we're getting closer to the holidays, it kind of feels like a little bit more of like a very relaxing period. Yeah, no, I'm excited. I kind of forget sometimes about American Thanksgiving because I'm Canadian. <laughs> I'm just like, even John, like last week, asked me about like, what are you doing for Thanksgiving? And I'm like, oh, I thought we were just going to WrestleCade. Like, <laughs> you're like, that's Thanksgiving I, for us. Yeah, like, I'm like, oh, yeah, Thanksgiving again. Okay. <laughs> I love it. It's funny too, because I was thinking about this and I was like, oh, I got to say American Thanksgiving to Taya, like just in case, because I know sometimes when you bring up Thanksgiving, Canadians are like, it already passed for us. Like, why are you telling us for, you know, yeah. that sort of thing. So it's pretty yeah. funny. <laughs> and then Christmas too is coming up. So that's nice. Have you started um, your holiday shopping? Um, I haven't really started the shopping. The decorations are up though. Are you those early people that start like in November? <laughs> because the last two years, so like 2020, I'm trying to like do this chronologically here, right before I went to Florida, like we were in that process of moving to Florida. So we didn't really get any chance to have our really Christmassy Christmas. And then last year we were like going through moving back to LA and we were on holidays and we went to Canada and stuff. So I didn't really get a Christmassy Christmas. So this year I made a point of being like, okay, so... I'm decorating. I am Mariah Carey. <laughs> Let's just make it happen. So it's like been a slow evolution over the last couple of weeks. Uh, the Halloween stuff is down. The Christmas stuff is up. And I just keep going for really unnecessary trips to Target to, to, buy, to buy more stuff. <laughs> That's how it is though. You walk into Target and you're like, oh, I'm just going to get these two things. And then next thing you know, you walk the entire store. And you're like, oh, that's nice. I'll take that. Oh, that's it's a new home decor collection. Okay. Yeah. Yes. That's how they get you. They're like, oh, here's all this pretty stuff, you know? And they have like the whole collection now at Target where you go in. I don't know if you've seen this, but they have your initials now on everything. Yep. It's everywhere. It's yep. everywhere. <laughs> what colors did you go with for Christmas? What is your um, Christmas colors? So our Christmas colors are red, silver, gold, white, kind of. And I had a very, like, my mom would always say, like, it's your Martha Stewart tree because it looks too perfect. But it's slowly evolving into, like, a more personal tree because there's, you know, ornaments from vacations and family stuff and things like that. So I <laughs> love it. I feel like I get the vibe that you're a very like artsy person, obviously with, you know, with your brand, your clothing brand look, I feel like, you know, you have that, that designer eye. Yes. I also have the eye of just like more is better. So, <laughs> so it's like we buy lights and I'm like, there's still not enough lights. And John's like, how many lights do you need? I'm like, I need more lights. Like it's very Liberace. What's happening? Here. Oh, that's so, it's like the one time of the year that you can actually do it and no one can judge you and you can get away with it. Yes. And we all know I love faux fur. So there is just a faux fur explosion everywhere. I got a faux fur jacket the other day and I haven't worn it yet, but I was thinking of you afterwards. I was like, oh, I'm going to be like very tired with my, with my little <laughs> faux fur tiny jacket from forever. I know. And like, we live in California where we can barely even, wear, like, I'm like wearing my, my beanie toque, as you would call it, toque in Canada. But I'm like, it's, it's wintery. It's not wintery at all. Like, I'm just trying to like live my air conditioned house life, but <laughs> pretend like I'm in Calgary or something. I don't know. 
<laughs> oh my god that is so awesome all right so let's get into you kind of touched on this already earlier uh but you've been talking about you know this year that you've had and it's been like literally the last year you have been everywhere impact triple a you've been mlw nwa power and some gcw and so many places that i'm probably forgetting right now uh so taya i want to start off by asking you uh going because this is something that you're from that you're very familiar with this was something that you were already doing very consistently and heavily prior to wwe but afterwards you went right back in there so my question is for you how did it feel to kind of go back to this world that you're so very good Good at in terms of going from promotions to promotions it was scary at first because i was left with like a lot of self-doubt and kind of trying to be like do i even belong here you know all the feeling sorry for myself kind of stuff that happens when you go through it something like that uh but then like once i got my feet wet you know once i like dove head first into the deep end it was like oh i know what i'm doing <laughs> i know this and, and then it just kind of the momentum kept going from there. And I'm just really thankful that I always, you know, you always, you don't want to like burn bridges. And I'm just thankful that I was able to have those relationships with promoters, with Impact, with AAA, with Conan. Uh, so people were excited to have me back and uh, I just went with it. And you're just that person that I feel that everybody just has a respect for because you know how hard you work and you see it. Like you don't have to go out and tell people, oh, I work so hard. Like you see it with you consistently with everything that you're doing, you know, getting all these championships uh, left and right. So I feel like you already had that. So that was definitely something good to uh, to keep, <laughs> honestly. And so with that being said, you know, uh, you, you go back out there and you're wrestling and whatnot, but it's not that easy to pick yourself up after after you know being released and i know that was already a year ago but where were you at right to the to the month yeah to yeah. the month so where were you at mentally there when you got that release and now that so much time has gone by where are you now in terms of how you're seeing that period of your life um i feel like it was like this really weird movie that i lived through or something like or a dream or something i don't know i and i just also like look back on you know facebook gives you like a memory from last year or stuff like that and i'm just like oh my god like i was so feeling sorry for myself like i was just not being myself i just was like this whole other person because i i mean my whole life i've had to really really battle to like get to where i am like nothing's ever been just handed to me i have always had to, to fight for it right and so i was just like okay well this is going to be another thing i have to fight again you know like i have to do this all over again and so i was kind of just like i was tired i was just just felt like shit. sorry oh, no that's okay <laughs> you can like it doesn't matter <laughs> yeah so um it was just yeah it was pretty bad and so like when i look back on pictures of myself from that the tail end of last year um, just even like the, there's Halloween photos that popped up that were like a week before I got released. And I'm just like, I don't even know who that person is because it was so, such a bizarre experience for me, <laughs> you know, it was just so bizarre and so weird. And I still won't wrap my head around it because it's just, it is what it is. And John always says, you can't control things that can't be like, you know, that can't be explained, like, you know? So I just kind of went with it and I'm like, okay, well. I'm a freaking wera loca. Like, guess we're going to do it all over again. Let's go. And that's pretty much it. And I just started working and I started getting bookings and I started just going absolutely everywhere. And I came in back into indie wrestling, like at a time that was very interesting because the idea of the op open door, <laughs> forbidden door policy was still very strong. So people were, you were allowed to work different places. That was not a thing before I went to WWE at all. Before COVID, that was not a thing. Uh, you know, so when you were signed somewhere, you were signed somewhere and that was the TV show you worked on and couldn't do other things. So it was really cool that I did come in at this time when I could dabble in MLW, go to impact, go to AAA, do NWA and all the other stuff. So it's been very interesting <laughs> and fun and challenging and I'm exhausting, but fulfilling all at once. And here's the thing that you mentioned kind of feeling down and feeling sorry for yourself and, you know, feeling like crap and, you know, all the other emotions, right? 
Was there a moment, was there a somebody, something, a, something within you that happened that you were like, okay, this is where I draw the line. This is where I'm done being sorry for myself. And this is where I go back out there and show the people like, this is who Taya Valkyrie is. And this is what got me here uh, in the first place. Was there anything in terms of what really spiraled your motivation to really just get back out there and prove yourself once again? I think once I just started working again, I it started kind of coming back. I don't think there was ever specifically like a person that said anything to me. Um, maybe it was probably, yeah, okay. So I'll go back. <laughs> I think probably like the real turning point was when I went back to Impact. Uh, probably. Like when I went back for Rebellion, when I won back the Reina Arenas Championship, when I started that wheel moving uh, was when I started feeling like myself again. Because I've, I've always said this, like Impact is such a, great environment to work in the people there we all treat each other like family with respect and so i just when i went back it was just like here she is again like it was it was just like it like no time had passed and i think that that really was when i was like okay you can do this you can do this again and like this time like make everybody swallow all their words and <laughs> Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, no, I feel you. Blazing, so. No, I completely get you. And here's the thing. And I do want to kind of give you like just like the fan perspective as somebody who is like watching all of this play out. I remember when you know you got hired and the announcement was was made, and I was like, "Fridge, yeah, like this is it. Like she's you know she she made it. Like this is it. Let's freaking go." And I remember watching NXT every single week and covering these shows, and I'm thinking like, okay they cannot drop the ball here on Frankie Monet, okay? Because you came out there, you were doing, I loved, uh, I think we even did an interview during this time period where you were going out there and, you know, just being yourself, which was, like you said, an extension of Taya Valkyrie, but on NXT. And uh, there were so many different moments where I kept telling viewers, like, they got to go with it with Taya. Like, we well, got to go with it with her here. And I just feel like, uh, I feel like they really had something there with you. And it kind of like bummed me out during that period to not get to see that happen. But to this day, I'm like, they should have done more with Frankie Monet because I really think that you just went out there and you proved yourself when you had that interaction with Raquel. Oh my God, I was like loving it. Like going to the moon when you confronted her I just thought that it was freaking phenomenal so with that being said I do want to ask you you know how you felt about your time period in NXT as Frankie Monet and how do you how do you go back and do um when you go back and look at that period how do you see it um at first I was having the best time like nobody could tell me anything I was just like I am doing it I am here I everything that I did led me here I kept telling myself you know I'm gonna do it John is just like, you are the queen of manifesting. You did it. Oh my God. Uh, you know, during a pandemic, like it was, there was like all these things and I'm like, you know, crazy. Okay. Well maybe then it was too good to be true. I don't know. <laughs> but, uh, at first it was great. I loved it. Everything was, everyone was listening to my ideas and everything was, you know, Presley was part of it and it was just so fun and over the top and crazy. And like, you know, my got to wear my big jackets and do my thing and be heel Taya Frankie, you know, uh, and then as time went on, it was just like, I just felt like sometimes that no one knew what to do with me or something. I don't know. It was very strange. And I, and I keep reminding myself too, is people don't realize is like, I was there during the pandemic. Okay. So nobody was having any house shows. There were no house shows. Everyone was just wrestling in the NXT building in front of like the other students when we would have practice house shows. So you weren't getting this, like the reactions that us as wrestlers want that feed our you know our energy and our and our willingness to do what we do you know it was really weird it was just <laughs> everything was weird like it was just all of that on top of the fact that you know there was a changing of who was in charge while I was there the person that hired me was out of the picture because he was sick uh you know like I never had these I never got the chance to have those really good connections with my coaches, with the producers, with Triple H, with Shawn Michaels, because it just wasn't even enough, enough time for it. Uh, and that's like my biggest regret is that I just didn't, I wasn't given the opportunity to really show who I, who I was or what I was doing. And yeah, it just kind of sucks. 
but it's it's one of those things where I feel like there was nothing really that you could do because you're talking about all these outside circumstances you're talking about you know we're going through a worldwide pandemic there's all these things going on backstage people don't know what to do everybody's figuring things out right and then you know you, you mentioned you're wrestling in front of students and everything's just so different so it really just feels like there was all those things that like you yourself couldn't actually control. So with that being said, you know, we've been seeing a lot of people come back and uh, a lot of those rights, uh, those wrongs be right. Uh, do you think that's ever something that you would consider going back if the opportunity came about? Um, I mean, I, we obviously have talked about it. And I've been asked this several times. I just I, you know, you never want to say never, like I said. Uh, I just don't know. You know what I mean? I, I feel like yeah, I was put I was hired at like the literally the worst time possible, but that's like all I can say. It was just like all the cards were stacked against me because the world was basically on fire and, <laughs> and things were just not going well for everybody. And it just sucks. Cause I'm like, Oh my God. And then there's the, what ifs, like, what if I'd been hired a year later? What if I'd done this? Like, you know, all this kind of stuff, but you can't, that will just make you drive yourself crazy. So I don't know, you know, it's just, we'll see. The wrestling world is so strange and bizarre and things happen from one day to the next. And all I know is I work very hard. I've earned my spot. I've been doing this for a long time. My work speaks for itself and that's all I can control. So. Exactly. I completely agree with that. Oh, will, but here we are. <laughs> exactly. And I mean, like, you're literally killing it. And it's, you know, selfishly, I love to see it because I'm like, oh, my God, like, she's going out there and having all of these cool matches with, you know, I love this person getting to see her with that person and just all of it. Uh, so I do want to go ahead and ask you, though, now that you are, you know, pretty much freelance and you're working, like we mentioned, MLW and just every place else. Uh, for you, what's it like now to go, kind of go back to controlling your schedule and kind of walk us through what your schedule looks like uh, throughout the week and having the option to say yes and having the option to say no? My schedule is insane. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually kind of nice because now I feel like because Christmas is coming up and I have given myself like time off that I'm like, okay, we're good. We're, we're trucking along. We're doing this. Uh, it's been insane. There have been times when I'm home for a day or two and then I'm off again. And by the time that day or two is over, I'm still recovering and I just do it again kind of thing. But it's been cool because there's just so many options for me to wrestle these different people, wrestle in different countries. We're going back to Australia in the new year again, We're going to England in the new year again. Uh, it's just, it's awesome. It's, it's hard. I don't have it, somebody booking things for me. I book everything myself. I manage everything myself uh, because I like to be able to know what's going on. This is my life. This is my day-to-day -day existence on this planet. So I want to know what's going on. So yeah, it's just been mental. It's been crazy, but it's, but it's fun. <laughs> I was going to say, I feel like just having the option, like I was just talking to Willie Mack at AAA and he was telling me, you know, uh, just having the opportunity to say yes and no to things. It's just so, uh, you know, it's great. And it gives you more power. I feel like when you wake up every day in the morning, it's one of those things where you're like, I'm in control, whatever decision I make today, it's going to impact, you know, the results that I get. So I feel like that's something that I feel, you know, I feel there was a, a time period where like independent wrestlers and all these people kind of just wanted to get signed, whether it was to WWE or AEW, the goal was just to get signed, period, right? Mm -hmm. And now like, I'm wondering, do you see a shift in that? Or do you think people still just have the goal of wanting to get signed? Or do you think more people are appreciating a little bit of that lifestyle where you're like, I can make real legit money just being freelance? Yeah, I think that it's it's definitely different now just because of how the open door kind of policy has worked uh, for people being able to go anywhere. Do I think that that's probably going to change? Yeah, I think that eventually, like, it's going to shift the other way and we're going to have to be, you know, picking one team to play for kind of thing. But that's okay. Like, it, there's just opportunities with Impact, with WWE, with AEW, with all these play MLW as well has signed talent for people to make money. I think a lot of the times beforehand, it was like, get to a big company because that's where you're finally going to actually be able to have a salary, <laughs> grow your credit, <laughs> all this kind of stuff that, like, you know, you have to face as an adult. Uh, and now it's, you can make, really good money on your own. You don't need necessarily need that. So it's nice to see that. And I'm, I'm happy to see everybody thriving. You're seeing more and more of these independent men and women all over the place, just killing it and being Hell happy, yeah. living their lives and wrestling wherever and, and being able to have a great life. 
Exactly. And I do want to talk about MLW because they just started uh, their new season uh, earlier this month, actually. I think it was November 3rd was the start of the new fall uh, season for MLW. You're the current uh, World Women's Featherweight Champion. There you go. You got the gold. <laughs> uh, so, Ty, I got to ask you, uh, how does it feel to be part of, you know, MLW? And also, given that they've added so many different names that all these types of people that work different styles to their roster. I really enjoy my time at MLW. I think it's just a really fun group of people. Court is great. Everyone behind the scenes is great. It's lo I love that they're embracing Lucha Libre and have more and more luchadors from Mexico coming up and working with them. It's just been really great also to just be the head of this women's division and what, helping it grow and, and having new talent come in. And uh, it's, it's fun. I mean, at the end of the day, you want to have fun, right? Exactly. <laughs> and I've been having a lot of fun and I like it there. So I'm just excited for this new season. I'm excited to see what will happen next year and all the women that are kind of come through those doors and come after me. You, I'm glad that you mentioned, you know, the women coming through the doors and all of that, because, you know, they're still building and getting more women uh, in MLW. Are there any people that you're just like, oh, I hope to see, like, whether they're already with MLW making appearances or people that you'd like to see make appearances in MLW uh, for the women? Where are you at on that? Mm, I mean, I just, I mean, I just want to face everybody. I want to wrestle everybody. I want to wrestle every girl, every guy, every, you know, everybody. So I'm just excited for anyone to walk through those doors. I don't specifically, you know, I've, I heard that they've announced Billy Starks is coming in, for example, you're going to see me wrestle Brittany Blago on the Thanksgiving episode. There is just like a lot of talent out there. A lot. I mean, give them all to me. <laughs> I'm just excited. And I'm excited for those, for the girls of AAA to be getting these opportunities, you know, watching, having Lady Shani there, having Yedra there, having Flammer there, just watching them because I know what they go through on a regular basis. And I lived it and I breathed it. And I'm just happy that they're getting that moment to shine. That's really cool. And I love it. I love that you can also uh, kind of speak to both of those worlds because it's one thing to be out here, you know, wrestling uh, in the United, Sp United States, but then it's a whole other thing to be, you know, also, you know, wrestling in Mexico, which you're very familiar with at this point and, you know, everything that you've done with AAA, but it is cool to even see like some of the people that I saw uh, make appearances at AAA, like people that were there for the first time, all of that, like that was pretty sick to kind of see. Uh, it's very exciting to see how that is kind of just you know coming back now again to the united states and just seeing a little bit more of that uh like you mentioned that open door policy exactly i'm excited for everybody and I, you know i just want them all to, to have great success and make money and feed their families and be happy like that's all you want right <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, you mentioned, and I'm going to close this off with my final question for you. You mentioned, uh, you know, feeding your families, being happy, doing what you love. Uh, and I always end my interviews with goals because I feel like, you know, especially when we're nearing this time of the year, when you're going into the, you know, the new year, everybody has like these big, massive plans of what they're going to do uh, for you, Taya, uh, whether it's in or out of wrestling, what is your like big 2023 plans goals dreams you name it well i definitely have more than one goal i think in wrestling it's to continue this momentum it's also i want to find a permanent home for myself i would be very happy to sign somewhere uh full time um but continue to be able to do what i do on the side as well and all the indie stuff and going to mexico because that's all very very important to me too and apart from wrestling like i've just doing more acting projects. Our film is winning awards and all these film festivals, the Iron Sheik Massacre. We're gonna find a streaming platform for it. I wanna write the full length version. I want to continue to be doing auditions and getting jobs and you know expanding as a performer. I wanna write my book. I want to you know, start investing in real estate. I don't know, like I just wanna do all these things. I, I've, I've always been layered. I'm like an onion, you know, there's all these layers. So I just want to continue to like grow as a human being and as a, a human just trying to make it. <laughs> I love that. I seriously love that because it's inspiring. And I feel, you know, trying to do a bunch of things. I feel like that's what satisfies, you know, satisfies the soul. It sounds very yes. easy, but just having like a lot going on, even if sometimes you're exhausted and you're going from city to city or country to country in your case, I feel like that is just, you know, it's nice to know that you are able to live that kind of lifestyle. Exactly. And I'm very thankful, you know, Thanksgiving. I'm very thankful. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so Taya, thank, seriously, thank you so much for taking time out of your schedule to chat with me. I'm sure we'll run into each other at some point once again uh, but before we go just please let the people know where they can find you on you know instagram or all of those platforms 
Yes. So you can find me on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok at the Taya Valkyrie on Facebook.com slash Taya Valkyrie and all my exclusive content, my photo shoots, my uh, BTS, my blog that I write is all at TayaXO.com. Phenomenal. I'm going to post all of the links to that in the description box below so you guys can check it out. Have easy access and find Taya wherever you want. Uh, other than that, please do not forget to subscribe. Give this video a like. We'll see you guys next time. Bye, everyone. Bye.